I just finished testing my ignition coil mod and I can fire the engine with my ignition coils, but now it's time to test ion sensing and see if I can get an actual signal from the inside of the combustion chamber through my spark plugs. Voiding warranties where sometimes on a really good day, we do actual science. Alright, I just finished testing my new ignition coil mod and now it's time to test to see if I can get an ion sensing signal through my spark plugs. And for that I have a similarly sketchy testing setup. I've got a 200 volt power supply that's originally to drive Nixie tubes and this has a little current bridge. That sends a 200 volt signal through a wire down to a pair of Zener diodes that are connected to the ground on my spark plug secondary winding. This allows me to measure the current I'm able to send through this 200 volt wire. If the current's high, that means the resistance across the spark gap is low and the pressure inside the combustion chamber is high. Also going through the oscilloscope is the signal to the leading coil. This should give me a frame of reference for the ion sensing signal. Let's fire it all up and see what happens. Okay, let's get the camera in close. A real pro would have had the camera set up beforehand. All right, so I've got audio, I've got video, I've got the oscilloscope. Oh no, I kicked it. Crud. Okay, I'm getting a signal. It's pretty weak though. I mean, right after, or right during the ignition coil, it seems to have a spike. And then right here is the hump I expect. I mean, it's close, it's just a mess. Let me see if I can adjust it. Okay, that's more like it. Showing a little hump right here that roughly relates to the peak pressure point. Now, it is a real mess right now, but I have software built into the Teensy that will average that out into a usable value. But first, I gotta figure out what I need this to be. Okay. Let me turn the volume all the way up. I may have to change out some of the resistors I have right now because there's not a whole lot of amplitude on that. But you can roughly see the peak about here. I can't tell you exactly where that peak is happening in relation to the crank. But the Teensy can. So I'm gonna have to go put the code on it and see what it says. But here's the important part of all this. I have a signal, it works. I can actually see the hump that is the pressure peak inside the combustion chamber. It's a mess, it needs to get averaged out over a lot of cycles, but it's there. We're onto something. I spent all of today trying to get the software and hardware to play together and everything to work, and in the end, I found out that I was putting the ion sensing input onto the wrong pin of my board. Yeah. But, in spite of that, I finally did get it to work. Watch this. Now, right now, my peak pressure point is showing about 40 degrees. Now, this isn't exact because my eccentric shaft position sensing, it's not perfect. I need to calibrate it, it's off by a couple degrees. But, it is in the ballpark, and I think I know why. Now, 45 is about the number for best torque, best safe torque, but for idle, you can run it a little bit lower than that. And I think that's what the engineers at Mazda did stock. But watch, I've got trailing advance and leading advance set up. And I understand my battery's low. Now let me show you what happens as I retard the timing. And really, the leading timing doesn't do much right now because of a negative split in idle. So I can take the leading all the way to negative 11. 
not much changes. But watch as I pull the trailing back. It's negative five going up. Pull it back 11 degrees. And why I do? My peak pressure point, it's past 53 degrees. It's really, really retarded from where it's supposed to be. Now it's at 55, it's settling out. But watch, I go the other direction. I put the trailing advance back in. And the peak pressure point goes right back to where it was, about 40 degrees. Again, the leading timing doesn't have much to do with it. And back again, just to prove I'm not crazy here. And peak pressure point beyond 50 degrees again. And back to where it was. And back to approximately 40. Being able to see the perfect timing in idle and adjust timing in idle, that's just a novelty. But being able to do the same thing under boost, now that'll be impressive. But you know what'll be even better? If I can get this thing to control its own timing and advance timing for perfect timing under all conditions. That'll be absolutely amazing. But I need to do a whole lot more work on this, spend a whole lot more time on the concept and get past a really crappy prototype. That's gonna be for another time on voiding warranties.